Pastor Darby was a good teacher. He taught the truth. Hmm, are we sure about that? I didn't know that that book was talking about me. I was told that book was against me. I was told that book was written by people that hated me. And I find out this book is all about me. Pastor Darby taught some things that I could definitely agree with, but he also taught some straight up heresy. Hebrew Israelism being the main point of focus here. He seemed to think that the Bible was about black people whom he assumed were the true Jews. Here's the thing about assuming that the Bible is about you. The Bible is not about us. Now, if we wanted to point out the fact that the Bible talks about humanity, talks about the sinfulness of humanity, talks about the different people that God interacted with throughout human history. In that sense, yeah, people are in the Bible, but the Bible is not about people. The Bible points to the person of Jesus Christ, the savior of humanity. The Bible is his story, not our story. All right, in John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. He says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. This is the problem that I have with this Hebrew Israelite movement, especially the one that tries to come across as if it's Christian. Yeah, you can be a Hebrew and be a Christian. Well, most of the time, people who claim to be Hebrews reject the essentials of Christianity. You're going to find a, a group of people that rejects the deity of Christ, believes that you have to keep the law to be saved. Now, I know to, to Stephen Darby's defense, he did not technically teach that you have to keep the law to be saved, although he seemed to imply that you still have to keep the Mosaic law. If we live this book, that's when Israel will wake up. See, Israel is blind until she starts following these statutes and commandments. But Jesus came to fulfill the law. Remember when they broke bread and drank wine and Jesus said, this is the new covenant. In other words, that old covenant, the Mosaic law, eradicated, done with. The law was a schoolmaster, is what Paul said. A teacher, a schoolmaster, until the Messiah came. That was the point of the law. Not so that people living in 2023 could try to keep it when we're physically incapable of keeping it. And let's not forget that the book of James says that if you stumble at just one point of the law, you've broken the whole thing. So if you think that you can earn your salvation by law keeping, you are running a race that you've already lost. When Jesus prayed to the Father, he said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, so you, God the Father, and your son, Jesus Christ. Notice he didn't say that they may know you and me and the law, or that they may know you, God the Father, and you, Moses, right? And I'm saying that because a lot of people try to say that Jesus is not God, <laughs> that Jesus was just a prophet or Jesus was just the Messiah. Why is Jesus talking about himself as though he's equal to God the Father? Because he is equal to God the Father, yet he is not the same person as God the Father. It's where the whole Trinity thing comes to play, right? So all the wasn't Jesus praying to himself? No, no, he was not praying to himself. He was praying to the father because Jesus is not the father. So I said all that to say, y'all better stop playing with Stephen Darby. Stephen Darby may have been right about some things, but he was wrong about the wrong things. All right, so we still talking about Stephen Darby. This person says the Bible was written for a specific people who don't know who is who. You won't be able to comprehend. He, Stephen Darby, spoke nothing but truth. Now, let's think about that last statement for a second. He spoke nothing but truth. Do y'all really think that Stephen Darby was infallible? Everybody makes mistakes. Christians make mistakes. Non-Christians make mistakes. Pastors make mistakes. Scholars make mistakes. Lay people make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes because we are all humans living in a fallen world. However... There are things put in place to help us not make certain mistakes, right? So people like Stephen Darby, who, who went off, you know, stopped preaching the whole of Scripture, focused on certain parts of Scripture to try to make Scripture say something that it wasn't saying. How do we avoid things like that? Well, we avoid them by sticking to the gospel Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, what was of utmost importance 
was the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when people start moving away from that message, you already have problems. What Hebrew Israelites have a bad habit of doing is taking little pieces of scripture and trying to make that represent the whole, which messes up the whole message of the Bible. Adam and Eve were not Hebrew people. They were the first humans. God loved them, right? But they fell. So God kicked them out of the garden and through Adam, sin fell on all humanity. So Jesus Christ came as the second Adam. But let's back up. Let's, let's stay in the Old Testament for a second. Because God did choose Abraham. He picked Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees, right? And Abraham is the father of the Hebrew people. But not just of the Hebrew people. Because the Bible says that Abraham would be the father of many nations. And that all people... All people would be blessed through Abraham. Now, Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. God chose the children of Israel to be a light to the nations. A light to the nations. Because God has always wanted to be in relationship, not with just one group of people, but with all groups of people. That's why in Revelation... You see every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. People want so bad for this Hebrew Israelite thing to be true, not realizing the implications of whether or not the doctrine is true. What I mean by that, is it really good news if black people are the true Jews and God wants to judge everyone who is not a Hebrew? Now I know different Hebrew Israelites have different beliefs. If you're from the One West sect, you think only black and brown people, Hispanics and Native Americans, those are the only ones getting saved. If you're more on the moderate side, you might try to say, well, I'm not a Hebrew Israelite, meaning I'm not in a camp. I just know that I'm Hebrew by blood, but I'm actually a Christ follower. But also I reject the name of Jesus because that's not really his name. His real name is Yahuwah, Yahusha, your, your whatever, your mama, whatever. But at the end of the day, it still goes back to law keeping is law keeping really a good thing not if what james said is true if james said that to stumble at just one point of the law makes you guilty of all of it then all of us are screwed if it's based on law keeping if jesus is really only concerned about one group of people that means god is a liar because god said that he is not a respecter of persons it also means that god doesn't forgive people so if God hasn't forgiven the different nations for all the sins that they've committed, why should we assume that God has forgiven the Israelites? This person says Stephen Darby was not in IUIC and not perfect. He said things that you don't have the nerve to say. So what's the deal? The deal is that Hebrew Israelism is a false gospel. And Stephen Darby ain't saying nothing that Christians ain't been saying for the past 2000 years. Sin is bad. If you don't have Jesus, you're going to hell. This is not news to Christians. This is news to the lost and unbelieving world, which is why our message should be to the world to repent and believe the gospel, not believe that you are a Hebrew Israelite.